Hi, Vinyl Community. How you doing? Um, I'm doing a handheld video clip this time around. Um, I'm, this is sort of a Beatles post. I'm not going to show you everything. I'm going to do kind of an overview because I got so much stuff. Uh, so many albums. Um, I'm not even going to touch the 45s, but I'm going to go through just to show you how I've got things cataloged, the order that I've got, and what I've got uh, up in the racks. Maybe pull a few things out, but I got one hand on the camera, so I can only do so much, sort of yank things out. And uh, I already tried this once, and a lot of times I was pointing at something, and the camera was pointing somewhere else. So I've got to be real careful to look through the viewfinder when I turn to the viewfinder. But anyway, uh, you know the famous uh, Expedit. Uh, bookshelves here that are perfect for LPs. We got most everybody's got them. Not everybody, but most everybody. And good reason why. Anyway, this is um, a lot of Beatles right in here. Now let me show you uh, what's up with uh, how I've got it organized and what I've got to show. And another post, I'll actually have a handful of things that are kind of like favorite things that I'll pull out and hold up and pull out and take a look at it. Anyway. On the first few shelves here, ah, I can look through the viewfinder now. The first few shelves here um, are pretty much uh, reference books. Um, variety of books that I just want to reach up and grab if I want to, you know, find something out, something's bugging my mind, or I'm looking at something online and trying to figure out uh, just what is what and what is accurate and who did what when. Uh, this is a great series of books right here by Bruce Spicer. Um, a lot of these are out of print now, but if you can get them, uh, get them. They're great for reference. Uh, highly recommended. Um, I think he's just got a website. If you just search for Bruce Spizer, S-P-I-Z-E-R, you'll, you'll find uh, his website and you can order books from there, what books there are left. Um, and Amazon's got them too, but a lot of them that have gone out of print, big money. Anyway, uh, first rack up here at the top shelf. Um, first off, above, at the beginning, this isn't very well organized, just a lot of book boxes up here. There's a CD box, Canadian CD box of uh, the 87 pressings of the Beatles albums in one of those wooden roll top uh, boxes. And next to that is the uh, Beatles, well, there's a couple of boxes there with other things, but those two big boxes there, uh, brown boxes, one is the uh, John Lennon box of vision and the other is the Beatles box of vision, which haven't been officially unboxed yet. Um, I got a various few other things up here, but a couple of Beatle related items, but not all. Um, back down here is kind of where everything starts. Uh, this is a nice LP divider that I got back probably must have been 83 or 84, probably 83. Um, from record store. I use that to sort of start things off. Know where the, know where the Beatles start. The uh, first bit here are the original um, capital label in various stages of uh, quality. Most of them pretty good. Some of them very good quality. Um, here's one thing I think if you saw my introductory uh, video, I showed that as being the first LP I ever owned and it's trashed and that's because I got it for my birthday when I was I think four years old or something so but I'm so glad I've still got it uh, and again these are all the capital original capital label yes I have one two three four five six copies of Sgt. Pepper on the original capital label some are mono some are stereo uh, all in varying qualities uh, some are great quality great uh, great condition uh, most of them have the original inner sleeves as long as, as long as the cut as well as the cutouts um, And then we've got uh, magical mystery tour uh, I think I've got an original mono. Yeah, right there. It says mono of that and the US so That's kind of nice to have and then it goes I, I told myself I would never start collecting all the various label variations uh, But then I started realizing that well, you know, I got a couple on Apple. I got a couple on the orange so yeah, I've been trying to fill in the gaps and then we start going over here. We start getting into the Apple labels and then we get into the orange labels and then over here we get into the purple labels uh, including one of the the purple label white album I have here is uh, on white vinyl. I'll pull that out one of these days and show it and then the revived um, Original rainbow uh, Label uh, that they revived in the 80s. So I've got a lot of things uh, on that. I've been filling that in quite a bit um, then after that comes, well, a lot of albums that sort of fell, uh, were released after their core, uh, uh, their, their core album collection after Let It Be. Here's five copies of the Red Album. I don't need five copies of the Red Album. I, they just, 
I just find them and I bring them home and I forget I already had one and then I forgot I already had two then I forgot I already had three but they are in different labels oddly enough I don't have an, a red on the original Apple label but I do have a red vinyl copy um, which is nice so uh, I only have one copy of the blue album on uh, the American capital so and it's in so-so condition we need to upgrade that rock and roll music Hollywood Bowl um, just all kinds of different uh, love songs you know all the different things came out some promo material here I'll, I'll pull those out and show them um, I also in the 80s when uh, late 80s when vinyl was starting to go bye-bye and uh, CDs were taking over I thought you know we're not gonna be able to get Beatle vinyl one of these days so I bought a whole handful of things one two three four five six seven seven or eight original um, well not original but uh, the 80s, the last pressings of the Beatles album, early Beatles albums, I focused mainly on the ones that were unique to the United States. And uh, I bought those, left them sealed, so they're there. Uh, jumping over here, Mobile Fidelities, uh, a couple uh, individually out of the box, and a, a handful of them that just were released with the full album artwork, as opposed to uh, what was released inside the Mobile Fidelity box. I don't have a Mobile Fidelity box, I'd love to get one, I just... You know, they're not, they're not getting any cheaper, but uh, I just can't afford one right now. I've never been able to afford one. Um, then we start getting into uh, international uh, releases. Australia, Canada. Uh, it's a Dutch release of the Blue Box. Um, interesting of the, the Dutch release of the Blue Box that came out in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, I think is when the Blue Box came out. 79, early 79. Or late 78, something like that. Um... The Dutch, the original Dutch box here doesn't have the flip top up top. You have to open it up like a book. You have to lay it down on its back and then open it like it's a big coffee table book to have access to all the LPs. The flip top makes much more sense. But it was just the original Dutch blue box that had uh, the, the opening that it's like a book, like a big coffee table book. Also, the other thing unique to the Dutch box is the white album. Um, has a number on it. None of the other blue boxes that I've read about have a number, uh, number on the white album. Um, but this isn't stamped either. It, it's not like a printed number. It's actually inscribed into the laminate. You have to hold it at a certain angle to see that there's a number sort of etched into the white, into the white album, kind of where the number originally was. So that's interesting. Uh, and then we start with German pressings. Um, back in the early 80s I was listening to some friends German pressings and they were going on about how good they were how how warm they sounded how they had a nice warm tube sound and I agreed and so I went out and started buying some of the German pressings where I could find them and I've been lately beefing up my uh, collection of the German pressings here so I got a good handful of the German Beatles releases um, and then we start going into the original UK I've got uh, original with the Beatles help rubber soul Original Sgt. Pepper, two copy, mono copies, one with the wide spine. Um, not the greatest condition, but um, you know, you're going to pay a lot of money if you want a wide spine in spectacular condition. And then some more UK here, just a, a later label, later pressing. And then Hard Day's Night Help. These are like 70s or 80s reissues of the UK's. Oops, sorry about that. I got to look through the viewfinder, pointing to the wrong place. Um, and then same thing more uk more uk this is i should have had this out the box where's the box oh it's it's neatly put away but these are nice this is the liverpool box and they had taken their entire catalog and kind of condensed it down into eight lps and they have uh, different photos on each one, each one representing a different era. Well, kind of representing a different era. They took their entire catalog and they condensed it into eight LPs instead of, what, 13, 14, including the double album of the White Album. And then they released them in a box called Liverpool Box. Um, and I just have those out separately, so that, and the box shell itself is up on the, up above here, wrapped up. Uh, gotta change hands here. Ugh. Let's see. Oh, look, another red album. But this is a British pressing, so it's okay. Now, this one is on. Oh, and this is the red vinyl. Okay. I thought I had a U.S. red vinyl. Maybe I do have a U.S. red vinyl, but I've got a U.K. red vinyl, which is kind of nice. I don't even know what I have. Here's the Love Songs on U.K. pressing. Um, 
not a lot of light here, sorry, but uh, some 12 inches that came out. Um, and then I started catching up. I, I, you know, I went through that period, I stopped buying vinyl. What? Stopped buying vinyl, you say? Yeah, so I stopped buying vinyl for a while. And then I had to go back and catch up. So I've got uh, a UK copy of the uh, Past Masters here and um, BBC. I have Anthology 2 and 3. I do not have Anthology 1. That's one that's on my list to get at a decent price. Um, I did nab a couple copies of Yellow Submarine song soundtrack. And what's nice is that this is the one on the yellow uh, vinyl. Um, I haven't opened those up yet. I'm keeping them nice and sealed, but I do have a black vinyl play copy that I recently picked up. Um, these are not the red albums. These are two copies of the one Beatles one album, UK pressings. Uh, Let it be naked, love, and then there's just a bunch of you know odds and ends type things that I sort of threw at the end here. Um, one being a very cool album, and I will pull this out. I'll, I should feature it later on so I can show it to you more carefully. But this is a neat little album called The Songs Lennon and McCartney Gave Away by the original artists. And a lot of the songs, you know, have I, I've never heard a Beatle version of them at all, not even a demo. Uh, it would be it would make a wonderful uh, lost Beatle album if they could find some kind of recording for each one of those. Now, some of those have been found. Uh, you know, they have found demos of some of those recordings, and they've come out. Um, I don't know how, I don't know where, but they've come out. Uh, and <laughs> If, if there are demos of those, you know, it would be great to compile a new Beatles album and put it out there, even if it's just the demos. Um, it would have been great if they had done their versions of it, but, you know, anyway. So, let's see. Then we hop down here. Oh, it's not over with yet, folks. <laughs> These are the Japanese pressings I have. And... Um, in the 70s, they started with... And I'll just sort of jump ahead to these. They started with a series of Japanese pressings that they put numbers to. They had, they were sort of done by, um, they were done by what, uh, what country they were from. And so they all have a nice British flag. Now these I'm missing the obies on, but I've been told that they exist somewhere. Uh, I got these first couple of, from a friend of mine when he was giving up his vinyl collection. So I do have the obies for those. He just has to find them and then I'll, I'll have them on. But, uh, these two are picked up from him and they don't have them. Ah, this one as well, so these three. I picked up another copy of Hard Day's Night here and it does have the OB that shows you the UK flag and then it says number three, third album that they released. And these are all UK variations, the UK releases, but they're pressed in Japan. Um, fourth one, Beatles for Sale. It just keeps right on going up through the, ca uh, through the cal catalog. Nine, um, Sgt. Pepper. And I, you know, have it all the way up through and including Let It Be number 13 and of course Abbey Road is 12 even though Abbey Road should be 13 and Let It Be should be 12 but they do it by release date. So I had that core collection. Um, I'm missing out uh, that's the copy of um, I'm missing out the copy of uh, Yellow Submarine. Uh, so I got to find that. It, it pops up every now and then on eBay, and one of these days I just got to nab it when it's uh, a good quality uh, or good price for the quality. Um, then I can finish out the core collection for that. Um, here is uh, another red album. Yay! You can't have enough of these. Uh, these are kind of tough to find. These Japanese. See, they just continued. They just continued to issue these in order as they were being released. So here's volume 14 and 15, red and blue. Um, and then volume 16, they decided to release, oh, here's the American variation. Let's put out the American variation. When I first bought these, I thought, oh, great, they're going to be the American versions. But no, they're not. They don't have the reverb. They don't have the American mastering. They took the UK tracks, the UK masters they were given of the individual songs. And they, uh, and then they just put them in the order of the US albums. But they're still pretty cool. So, you know, we're up to 16. I'm missing out 17, which is the Speedle second album. Uh, tough one to find, but uh, there's, there are a number of them that are tough to find. So I skipped from 20 to 23. I got to find 21 and 22 somewhere. So I've been beefing these up. Here's uh, Hey Jude, but it's missing the uh, the Obi. I got to find one with the Obi one of these days. Here's an odd one. It's it's Meet the Beatles. Same cover as the U.S., but it's got a Japanese flag on it. So it's a Japanese issue 
that they did way back when of the American version of the album. Interesting. So anyway, then more and more and more of those. Uh, to jump back here a little bit, I've got, I was lucky enough to pick up a few of the red vinyl mono issues. Uh, one here of Revolver, Help, Beatles for Sale, and With the Beatles. So those are kind of nice to have. Again, I shouldn't be going into so much detail here, but because it's kind of wonky to be holding this and try to show you guys. Um, and then recently they they put out a, a new series, sorry about that, they put out a new series uh, just a few years ago. Uh, they re-released the catalog in Japan and I nabbed a good handful of those. I got almost, almost all of the core collection here except for the first album, so I need to find that. Um, and then I have a big empty box here. This is sort of my right hand box. This is where I plan on putting current things I'm going to show in current uh, in upcoming posts and just new items that I bought and also it's a little room for expansion because I know I'll be buying more Beatles stuff because I'm just going to. Um, another box, uh, another box full of Beatle things here. Uh, John Lennon, this is sort of where the solo stuff starts. This is a John Lennon box set has all of his albums in it. This is something I've always been looking for and um, finally got a copy of it at a really good price. And over here we got John Lennon, solo work, um, uh, the solo albums, original solo albums, some UK versions, Mobile Fidelities, and then uh, some recent RSD releases. This is, these are the, uh, this is the box set of For Imagine that they put out on Black Friday. And then we get over here to Yoko Ono, several Yoko Ono albums, and you'd buy some more Yoko Ono albums. And we jump down here, and we've got all kinds of Paul McCartney stuff and solo material. More Paul McCartney, more Paul McCartney, more Paul McCartney. These are the uh, CD boxes or books that have come out for the reissues. And then uh, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, driving Wilbury's box, Ringo Starr, and oh yeah. I have one of these. Actually, I've got two of these, but I'll feature them in uh, an upcoming uh, uh, post. Um, those of you who know what this is, you know what this is. Uh, those of you who aren't sure or don't know, I'll tell you about it in an upcoming post. But that's pretty much my Beatles vinyl, 12-inch um, Beatles vinyl. So I'm going to leave it there and, um, and uh, say goodbye for now. Uh, I'm exhausted standing up and doing all that, it's, and I hope you get able to tolerate me jiggling the uh, camera around. Anyway, uh, take care, and I'll be doing a more succinct post on just a handful of really cool things that I like from my Beatles collection. And 45s, like I said, 45s, I didn't even touch 45s, but I got a ton of 45s as well. So anyway, take care, and talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Second earthquake. Bye.